Hello, my name is Medora Pashnikova, and I'm one of two critical care specialists at Texas A&M University Small Animal Hospital. This is my sidekick, Willard, who's currently behaving really well, and he is a good Sam who actually came to our emergency room about uh, three years ago and was rescued by me, and we've been best friends ever since. I went to veterinary school um, at Michigan State University from where I graduated in 2009, and I knew from there that I wanted to pursue a small animal rotating internship, which brought me down here to Texas. And after my internship, I knew that I had a love for emergency and critical care medicine, and I stayed on here as a small animal resident and did three years of that before um, interviewing for a job as a faculty member here at the small animal clinic, uh, where I've stayed for the last two years as well. So I've been in Texas for six years as a veterinarian, and I'm really happy being here and being part of Anim University. Okay, so what made you decide you wanted to become a veterinarian? Wanting to become a veterinarian wasn't something that I knew early on in life. It was something that developed when I was in college, actually. And I actually went to college thinking I wanted to be a biochemist or a chemist or a biologist. But I combined my love for natural sciences with my love for animals and my love for physiology. And putting those three things together kind of made me want to pursue veterinary education. I actually took a year off after college to um, solidify my plans and to make my application really the best that it could be. And so that was the year that really was formative in me knowing that veterinary school was the right thing for me. What do you enjoy doing in your free time? In my free time, I spend a lot of time um, with this guy, but I also have two cats at home that are very near and dear to me. I, I try to do things that are actually unrelated to work whenever possible. Um, that involves just spending as much time outside, running and swimming as I can, doing some gardening, and I recently have gotten into soap making as my most recent hobby, so that makes for a lot of good presents for a lot of friends and technicians, and that's definitely something that we enjoy doing on the weekends too. So what made you decide that you wanted to go into emergency critical care? Emergency critical care was actually something that uh, became a passion very early on in veterinary school. In fact, it was from almost the day of my interview because my uh, interview at, for vet school was with a criticalist and an internist up at Michigan State. And that criticalist became my mentor and he was is such a force in our field that I became very close with um, his way of teaching and the cases that he saw and I actually spent a significant amount of time shadowing him um, during my days off and being in the small animal ER even when I wasn't on clinics yet and so for me emergency became sort of where I went where I gravitated to when I didn't have anything else to do and from there it became a professional career as well. So what was veterinary school like for you? Veterinary school was a, um, a time I'll never forget, and I, I think that I consider my vet school classmates the people that are closest to me and will always be closest to me because you go through a lot of hardship and long hours um, and a lot of uh, difficult cases together. It's a really formative time in life. I enjoyed all four years of it. I made some extremely long-lasting relationships and friends. Um, I especially enjoyed my clinical years, which for me at Michigan State was my third and fourth year. Um, and in the beginning of that, though, the didactic part of it was, was pretty difficult, pretty challenging, especially the first year where all you do is anatomy and histopathology. Um, those were the really difficult times, but persevered through. We had a really good time, and then it all paid off at the end um, after clinics. So how did you end up here at A&M after your residency? So after my, res after my residency, I actually uh, interviewed at probably six or seven different both private practices as well as universities for a job as a criticalist and I knew that those are very different positions to fill. If I had gone into private practice I would have probably moved um, somewhere along the east coast uh, part of the country and I knew that I wanted to continue to teach and also to research and to be part of the academic forefront of um, educating as well as advancing knowledge in veterinary medicine and so I knew that academia was probably the best place for me and fortunately at that time a was also um, in a, a, a had to advertise the job for which I applied, interviewed here, which was a daunting task when you interview in front of your colleagues that you've worked with as a resident for so long, um, but, but everything worked out and they chose me for the job, so that's how I stayed down here. So speaking of research, what are you working on? So research for us, uh, specifically as people who are mostly clinically minded, um, like myself and, and Dr. Bradley, the criticalist, usually involves very patient-oriented research. So 
questions that can directly relate back to patient care and to um, solutions that are best for patient outcomes. So we take a question that we've clinically come to by seeing a case, and then we make it into a study, and then we bring it back with those results to what, what do we know, what can we learn from these patients. So most of what we do are really clinically minded questions and not so much working in the laboratory like some other scientists do, but working with patients that are actually you know, hospitalized in our, in our ICU. Um, some of the projects that we've done in the past include things like looking at ingestion of foreign bodies, looking at um, how anemic patients become well hospitalized in the ICU, looking at what happens to red blood cells after they're stored um, before a transfusion, um, looking at septic patients, patients with severe systemic illness, and monitoring some of the changes in their blood work and their survival outcomes. So we literally have investigated just about every different uh, population of sick patients in our, in our hospital, and it's been a lot of fun. We have a lot more in mind um, planned for the future. So what advice do you have for young people who wish to pursue a career in vet med? So I think that anybody who's interested in veterinary medicine uh, early on, especially before they've had a chance to be exposed to um, veterinary medicine, the first thing I would recommend is getting involved as a volunteer at a local uh, veterinary clinic or a shelter or maybe both and making it a point to experience all different layers of veterinary medicine and that includes being part of what happens at the front desk, being part of what a technician does, being part of what a doctor does, being part of every aspect of that field because we do deal with many you know, client interactions, we deal with scheduling conflicts, we deal with many things that are apart from just dealing with dogs and cats and puppies and kittens and so having a really realistic image of what veterinary medicine is like is really important so that you're not disappointed once you get to vet school. If, what are you most fascinated about with the field of veterinary medicine? I think veterinary medicine is becoming more and more fascinating to me as I understand and appreciate and am a part of the human-animal bond more and more. And, and I really, really enjoy that part of my job, which is that, especially in emergency medicine, we're dealing with situations in which a human-animal bond was suddenly disrupted for an emergent reason. And so the most rewarding thing for me is to bring those two animal and person back together and heal them and make that bond um, healthy again. And so that's actually a really rewarding experience for me and that's the one thing I appreciate the most about veterinary medicine. So if there was one thing you could tell the community, what would you like them to know about the field of veterinary medicine right now? Veterinary medicine is probably at the forefront, um, the highest standard that it's ever been at before and there are many things that we do that are in parallel and at the cutting edge as much as they are in human medicine. Uh, there are novel procedures, there are clinical trials, there are studies going on that are no less significant and no less um, purposeful than what is happening in some of the leading hospitals in the world in uh, human medicine as well. So we're really proud of being a part of that and here at AM we definitely are that is a significant priority for us. That's what we're we're here to do. Um, we are um, I think also probably the most compassionate and understanding that we've ever been of the human-animal bond. And I think that all of us as veterinarians realize that these creatures are also our family members and we definitely treat them that way. Um, on, the, on the other hand, we know that also having pets is expensive. It is a financial and an emotional investment and so we try to take care of them and take care of the client every step of the way. And if any of you are any, ever interested in coming to Shadow or see what A&M's Phenomenal Hospital is like, you can definitely get in touch with us and we're happy to take you around on a tour or to talk to you in more detail about the vet school application process or about what happens within the walls of our hospital, what happens with all the different specialties of veterinary medicine that we practice at A&M beyond just general practice because we do have many of them, almost all of them, and so we're actually a very tight-knit nexus of different um, departments working together. So we're always happy to share that with the public. And we do every year have an annual uh, day for the public to come and visit the school. And you, got, you can actually take a tour and see how we do some surgeries and some procedures and what the facilities actually look like. So we're always, always very excited to have visitors.